So we hear the writer of Hebrews addressing this congregation of believers that's discouraged, this congregation that is faltering. And uh, the writer has this challenge to reinvigorate this faith community, to remind them again of whose they are and who they are, to draw them back again to why they became a community in the first place, to remind them of what was so exciting and wonderful about this good news of God and particularly Jesus, what he had done for them. And what this writer does so well throughout Hebrews is draws on powerful images. The, the writer use, uh, works very hard to bring to life images and pictures that help us to think of God and Jesus and salvation in, in different ways and get different ideas on it. And so as we go through not only this reading today, but in the weeks to come, we're going to be looking for some of those key ideas, those images that come to life for us and get us thinking about this. But today's reading focuses especially on Jesus and gives us powerful images of him. And don't we all sometimes, whether we are um, feeling like we're faltering or worn out or whatever it is, regardless, we all sometimes need to be reminded, don't we, of why we are a faith family, of why our God is so good? Well, that's what we're, we get to do a little bit of this evening. So we begin... Uh, at the beginning of the book, with this reminder that God has long been speaking to God's people. God has long been speaking. But for much of history, it was through prophets. That was the way God often communicated. But now in Jesus, God has done something radically different. God has changed his way of communication and actually spoken to us through the embodied word, the word made flesh, God's Son, the Word Himself, come to life. God has come to speak to God's people. And not only to speak, but to reveal to us who He Himself is. And we hear that the Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. Right? That Jesus is the imprint of God. That when we look at Jesus, we see what God is like. If we want to know who God is and what God is like, we simply look at Jesus and we get some wonderful ideas of who this God of ours is. Wonderful and powerful. And so we hear this word, the sun radiates God's own glory. This powerful image of shining, brightly bringing light. This, this sun who sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. And then the writer uh, draws us into this journey, this journey of Jesus. In one moment, he is the one who's suffering for us. It's, he says, when he had cleansed us from our sins, when he had died and rose again, then he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven, reminding us that Jesus is the one who came in the flesh to die and now sits at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This is who Jesus is. Wow. Wow. Jesus is the one who has journeyed from death to glorious life. And so then, um, in the next verse, in verse 10, we hear this phrase, a perfect leader. And actually, most translations um, translate that word, they translate it pioneer. The pioneer of our faith. This is the first and most powerful image that I want you to be thinking about tonight. And you see on the slide, a pioneer of salvation. When you hear the word pioneer, what comes to mind for you? What pops up? What images do you get? What do you associate pioneer with? Columbus, an explorer, right? Coming to a new land. What else? Crossing in a covered wagon, right? Venturing across the unknown towards a future place. Experiencing things before anyone else. Strength. Courage. Leaving a path to follow. 
What's that? Curiosity. What else comes to mind when you hear pioneer or think about pioneer? Camp counselors probably think of that Sugar Creek program of pioneers for 8th and 9th graders, right? Or And maybe, maybe you think about the idea of um, a pioneer in space travel or a pioneer in medicine or a pioneer in technology, right? Pioneers um, are, some, are people or a person who goes where others have not yet traveled, right? For the purpose of opening a way that others might follow, okay? Let me say that again. A pioneer goes where others have not yet traveled for the purpose of opening a way that others might follow. This is the way Hebrews portrays Jesus' way through death to resurrection. Jesus enters fully into the reality of human suffering in order to open a way to life. He's the pioneer. He's gone before us. He's blazed the trail. He's made the way from death to to life, the pioneer of salvation. That's a powerful image. Powerful image. We also hear Jesus um, in this text portrayed as um, our family member. Jesus, our brother, the one who calls us brother and sister, right? We read in, in verse 14, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood. The Son also became flesh and blood. And we actually, um, I reduced this reading, took out some of the middle pieces, but in this chapter, he lays out this idea even more about how Jesus calls us brothers and sisters and claims us as family members. But then this image of Jesus as a brother, one who we are on the same level with, in the same family with, transitions into Jesus the liberator. So listen to what we hear in the rest of 14 and into 15. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Jesus, our liberator. So here we hear specifically him talking about being set free from the slavery to the fear of death. I think what we're talking about is people are held captive by fears that can close off the future. Right? And Jesus has the power to liberate us from those things. I want you to think about how Jesus is your liberator. How how can he or has he or can he set you free from fears that captivate you, closing off your future? What are those fears? I just want you to think about them. Just think about them. The pioneer has blazed the trail to life for us, right? The liberator sets us free from those powers that control us, that hold us back, that close off our future. This is who Jesus Christ, our Lord, is. Our pioneer, our brother, our liberator. And last but not least, Jesus is our high priest. Now this is, I think, particularly a powerful image uh, in the Hebrew mindset. We don't in this congregation in particular, but really in, um, in, in Lutheranism as a whole, we don't um, have this idea of a high priest as a priest as a go-between between God and people. Um, so certainly this was especially a powerful image for the Hebrew people. But I think we can understand this idea. So here are these verses again. Therefore, It was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. 
then, that is, as high priest, he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. He could offer a sacrifice that takes away the sins of the people. That's what he's done. He's offered himself as the sacrifice to take away all our sins. It's incredible to think that he's done all of these things. The pioneer, the brother, the liberator, the high priest, and of course so much more. And then the last verse. And I wonder where this resonates in your life. He says, since he himself, Jesus, the one who became flesh and blood like us, since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. The writer, speaking to a people who are hurting, a people who are persecuted, a people who are ebbing in their faith, Reminding them that whatever they're going through, whatever they're facing, yeah, Jesus knows. Yeah, Jesus, remember, became one of us. Remember, he went through it. And he faced suffering that I doubt any of us have faced before. No, he has, been, he has suffered. He has been tested. And because of that, he is able to help us when we are tested. How are you being tested right now? And you, you can think of that word tested in a, you know, in a very wide open sort of way. What is pulling at your faith right now? What is trying to pull you from God? What is getting in the way of the life of faith that God wants for you? What's getting in the way? See, Jesus has been here. He's done this, and he's able to help. Because he's the pioneer. He's the liberator. He's the brother. He's the high priest. We're reminded today why we are a faith family. Because we have an amazing God who loves us beyond measure. And this amazing God has come to blaze the trail, to make the way, and has done all that is necessary for us to be with him forever. But not just for some future time, but even for the here and now. He is with us. He is with us. Let's pray. Oh, good and gracious God. It's easy to forget. It's easy to forget how blessed we are to be called your children. It's easy to forget how powerful is the good news of all that you have done. It's easy to get lost. It's easy to veer off track. It's easy to forget who you are and how great your love is for us. God, we pray today that you renew our faith. We pray today that you encourage us in our spirits. We pray today that you remind us again of your great love and all that you have done. That we might continue to treasure this good news in our hearts, but also to live it, to share it, to celebrate it. Because it is an incredible thing to be called your sons and daughters. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. invite you to a few minutes of reflection on this one who is the pioneer of our salvation.